Legendary comedian Norman Wisdom has been a household name for over 50 years. He's topped the bill in Britain's variety theatres, made primetime television performances and starred in 17 feature films. And his fan base keeps getting bigger. Recently, Norman was given a knighthood for his services to British entertainment. He's met the Queen before, at his six Royal Variety performances. But even on his big day, Norman couldn't resist doing his trademark trip for the Queen. And apparently, she's quite a fan. Oh, don't laugh at me. Norman Wisdom was born on the 4th of February, 1915. He had a difficult childhood. He and his elder brother, Fred, grew up in a working-class family in London's Paddington. That's it. Number 91, Fernhead Road, Paddington. He used to live here, way back a bit, you know, and left here, 1929. My parents were divorced and separated when I was only nine years of age. My father used to be away for weeks, sometimes months, because he was a chauffeur. I remember walking to school with sometimes no shoes and no socks on bare feet, but the kids used to do that in those days. And he, he didn't leave us any money to buy any food with, or he said, didn't leave any food either. And so my brother and I used to have to um, go up to Harrow Road, where they used to put the grocery stuff outside the shops on display in those days anyway. And we used to nick, nick food. My father, he was unkind at times, and he, when I annoyed him one day, he picked me up and he threw me, and I hit that ceiling. And I remember I came down in the other corner there, and uh, probably learned me how to fall. I started to learn how to fall properly. Eventually, Norman and his brother were placed with a series of foster parents, ending up in Deal, Kent. Norman left his guardians when he was 14, and after a series of unsuccessful jobs, found himself back in London without work and homeless. I had nothing, and that was it. I was just by myself. Uh, and so, and that's why I went down and I was sleeping behind the Marshall Falls statue at Victoria Station, and I used to go to a coffee store which was open all night, and I used to go at, at about half past one or two o'clock in the morning and just look over the shelf. And, and the coffee store lieutenant used to push me a hot pie and a cup of bubble. He'd spoken to me. I told him the, the state I was in, and what, he was just sorry for me. And this went on for about seven, eight, nine nights, until one night he said to me, why don't you join the army? You can get into the army as, in the band as a boy. In the afternoon, I had an interview with the bandmaster, who, who said to me, you'd like to be in the band, would you? And I said, oh, yes, please. So he said, you know all about music. I said, oh, yes, sir. And he said to me, what's a flat? And I said, D D I don't know that one, sir. He said, well, what, what is, what's a sharp? And I said, I haven't come across that one either, sir. And he just looked at me and he said, you don't know anything about music, do you? And I knew that he was just going to say, go on, get out, forget it. And I put on... I can assure you, the best act I've ever done in my life, whether it be the London Palladium or films or whatever, I looked at that man and I said, I don't know anything about music. I'd like a chance to learn. Please, please, sir. Then I can make something of myself as I grow up. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. That man looked at me and he said, all right. All right, I'll take you. <laughs> and he was crying, I'd won. And I was in the army. And I owe everything to the army, 100%. In the army, Norman became an accomplished musician. During World War II, Norman Wisdom was posted to the Royal Corps of Signals in Cheltenham. Quick, march! 
Bring it on now. Left, right, left, left, right, right, left, 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 left. He was a strange character, probably still is. He was a sort of elusive character. Uh, nobody got to know him too well at the beginning. It's one of these people who was never there when you expected, or he, or he was missing, or he was late. He was late a lot. And, um, in fact, he was late so much that the Sergeant Major used to look round and say, is wisdom here? would say, yes. He said, right, we'll go. Norman played in a band to entertain the troops, and Patrick helped organise the shows. We hit on this brilliant plan of getting each member of the band to do a little spot tell a joke, do card tricks, sing a song, do something like that, and they all did something. And it was Norman's turn, and I said, what do you fancy doing? He says, I, I don't really know. He says, I've got a, one or two mimes. I said, oh, that's good, we don't get many mimes. One was dancing with different shaped ladies. second one was the boxing one, fighting this imaginary opponent who knocks, knocks hell out of them. I remember them quite clearly. And uh, got a lot of applause. And after the show, a gentleman came round, knocked on the dressing room door, and he said, are you a professional? And I said, no. Why? He said, well, if, when you leave the army, you don't try to become a professional, you must be raving mad. A gentleman's name was Rex Harrison, and I'm so grateful to him. When he left the army, Norman began doing short comedy spots at variety theatres. <laughs> and these early shows got him noticed. On came this young chap, you know, and I was in stitches. You know, it takes a lot, really, to make me laugh. But he was a very funny man. A few years later, Norman Wisdom and Vera Lynn appeared on the same bill at a charity concert at London's Victoria Palace. These are very important, these evenings, particularly if you're just entering into the business to be seen. And we'd got our positions, our running order, and he apparently was on rather early. Vera Lynn traded her star spot in the lineup with Norman so that he would get a better chance to impress the London audience. Vera Lynn's pianist came to me in the afternoon and said, uh, said I have to ask you a favour. I said, what's that? He said, well, uh, Miss, Miss Lynn has to catch a train tonight. And she said, he said, would you change? And I said, oh, yes, of course. I have no alternative, but I'd be happy to do so. Anyway, he went on, and he was a great success. And when he came off, he thought, saw me still standing there in the wings watching him. She had changed the spot with me deliberately to help me. A wonderful, wonderful lady. From that night, Norman went on to become one of Britain's most popular variety acts, performing at top London venues like the Casino and the Palladium. In the late 1940s, he made a move into television and did a series of one-man shows in which he proved that he was more than just a comedian. Your eyes are blue, your kisses too. I never knew what they could do. Just can't believe that you're in love with me. I was surprised how well he sang. 